Hello. Ooh, dropping things before we even started. Hello, is anybody there? Would anybody like to come and join myself and Lola while we do some more drawing? I'm just going to wait to see if anybody arrives. I've maybe forgotten to tell people to arrive. Maybe you've forgotten. We've got three people. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Fiona. How are you? It's lovely for you to be here. I've got another person arriving. Oh, that's good. I don't mind as long as I've got at least one person who wants to draw along. You know, that's fine. So I shall start by saying thank you to everybody who was drawn and putting images into my group last week. Hello, Anne. And Lola, let's just say hello, Lola. Hi. <laughs> Lola's here this week. Last week she wasn't here because she had fallen when dancing and she had sprained her wrist and her ankle. So she's feeling a bit more like she can draw today. So I've had so many beautiful pictures in the group and I did say that I was going to do a giveaway so I had uh, about 32 people who posted beautiful pictures in you're all much better than what you realize hi Kim hi Sandra hi Kathy so I did say that I was going to give away this print so I hope you can see that one I think it's appropriate at, at the moment because we all want a good hug don't we and we're not able to go out and give our friends a good hug. So I thought that'd be quite a nice giveaway. Um, I've got some names. So everybody who posted into the group, I've got all your names in here. And I'm going to get Lola to pull out a name to see who's won. So there you go, Lola. You have a, you've got the responsibility of choosing a winner. And then we'll get started. Hi Adele, I'd uh, lovely to know if I've got um, adults, children, males, I've had all sorts, so that's really nice. So what's, what's the name Lola? Glenda Scobie. Oh Glenda Scobie. Hi Glenda if you're there, you have won a print, so I'll get your address and we'll send it off to you. So today we're going to draw a half face, so this is an image it's, this is a boy with a wolf, and I think the full face is too much to do. So we're going to do a half face, and we're going to have the wolf howling at the moon. So I hope you are all willing to get involved. All you need is some extra... I'm sorry, I'm a bit pasty looking in this light. But um, you need some A5 extra smooth card, or paper, and... Um, a button I'm going to show you the size of the button when we get started and some coloring pencils if you've got a black fine liner as well if there's any kids and they don't have a fine liner just a black felt tip pen will do so um, we'll get started so I just need to turn the camera around and then we will get started so just bear with me a little second For everybody who's drawn, it's good to lean on something. So if you have a magazine, um, that's always good. It's better than doing it on a hard surface. And I'm going to show you. And if anybody d doesn't want to see the words and the people speaking, you can just swipe it to the right. So you don't need to worry about that. This is the size of my button. So if I turn it around, it's just short of um, an inch and a just a bit larger than an inch and a half so it doesn't really matter what size of button but that's what one I've got so you can draw to whatever size you like so we're going to start we're going to we're going to have it that the face is coming off the page so if you have your button and then if you place it just beside the edge then you know that we're going to do a little mark there and that is where we're going to put the button, okay? And if you just bear with, I'm going to come in and draw around that. I'm drawing around a camera in front of me, so it's not always easy. So I'm going to try my best. So there. And I'm going to try and go a bit slower for some people as well. So there, we've got our button. And that's us, that's going to be the pupil of the eye. Okay, well, not the pupil, sorry, the iris. 
and now we're going to you can either use your ruler and about a third of the way up the circle put the ruler through and then do a little dot either side yeah and then that is going to be if I show you this eye that is going to be this point and the far away point okay so now we're going to use that as our guide now I know that a lot of you have done a little bit of drawing eyes with me before but this is what we where we have to start if we're going to have our half face with the wolf so we're going to go through this circle to meet this other point okay so I'll just bring it around like so and it doesn't matter if you make any mistakes because that's why we have a rubber now this time I'm going to bring the bottom of the eye down below the circle we can get lots of different types of eyes and shapes of eyes by doing that I'm sorry if my hand shakes a little bit but we'll fix it later so there we're starting to get the shape of the eye do you want me to bring it down a little bit So that you can see. Now we're going to rub this bit away at the top. If I can find my rubber. Thank you Lola. <laughs> so let's rub this away. And that's where we're going to put the eyelid. So we've now got the basic shape of an eye. I'm just going to go back over this. So please let me know if you're there. Hi Janice. And who else have I got? Just let me know if you're there because it's nice to know that I've got company. So there, we've got the first shape of our eye. Now we're going to do a nose. So if you have a small button, you can use a small button for this if you're not com comfortable with just doing little, like a little half shape here for your nose. So I'm going to show you with the button. Just have it coming off the page. I'm going to move over so you can see how far off the page I've got it. So there, round about there. And the good thing with the button is you can move it around and see where you'd like your nose to be. So there, we're going to put it there. And we're just going to draw around here, this little bit here. So that's the side of the nose. And you can play around with that and make it a bit bigger if you want. But then if you put a little bit here, there, you've got a nostril. How's everybody doing? Hi, Tina, how are you? Um, I hope you're drawing along as well. So you can play around as well. You can get your different nostrils, you know. That's quite a, a piggy one, actually. Well, I can change it. I can rub it out. So there, we've got our nose. And now we're going to do a half lip. So if you imagine that your lips... If you if you have another piece of paper, you can you can draw at the side there. But we're going to do a little little line here. And then bring it, bring it down so, like so. So there, his lips are coming off. I'm wondering if you're going to do a boy or a girl. And then if you do a little line here, then that gives you your bottom lip. Now, don't worry about mistakes. You know, just rub it out if you're not happy with it. I'm not overly happy with that. And if I was sitting on my own drawing, I'd rub that out and start again. But it doesn't really matter. We'll just, I'm just going to go with it. So there, we've got his lips. And now we're going to do the chin. So if we just come down slightly from the chin and just do a little line. So if you want to do a boy or a girl, have I got any children today? Hi Judy, how are you? You're going to join later. Let me know if there's any children um, drawn along and then I know to go a little bit slower and to maybe recommend different things. But um, if I've got adults, um, let me know as well. Any boys, any girls? So we're going to, at the side of the eye, just do a little line here. Oh, hello, Tim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope you've got your pencils out. So now we're going to bring his face around to meet up with his chin. So if, if we just do a little guidelines like so. And don't get hung up on what your, your, your lines are just now because you can rub it out. If you think, all right, that's too fat a face, we'll rub it out. If it's too thin a face, rub it out. Just have a play. Everybody keeping up with me. Hi, Rebecca. What's Sam saying? Oh, laptop's freezing. 
I'm sorry, Sam. I hope you get a chance later on. I'll put it on my group so that you can watch later. So we're now going to do his hair. But if you want to do a girl, do a girl. So we're going to start at the corner of the page and we're going to do like a sweep. Give him like a bit of a flick. Like so. Yeah. And if you're doing a girl, you know, play a bob, you can give her long hair, you know, whatever you want to do. I always do girls, so I thought it'd be good to do a boy today. So we're just going to follow around. It's all trial and error, you know, just get a feel for where you want his head to be. See, that's too small a head. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. So ignore that line and we'll rub it out later. So there, that's him. He's got a bit of a head and I'll maybe play around with that. When we're doing the hair, we can fix that line. So Janet, you're going to draw later. And good afternoon, Gail. How are you? So because we're doing a whimsical, yeah, it's not realistic at all. We're going to give him, I'm going to give him, but you can give him whatever you like. I'm going to give him quite a long neck. So now just find where your chin was and then just draw a straight line and do it as long as you like. Get adventurous, you know, have a play, find what your style's gonna be. And then we're gonna turn it around and bring it, bring in his shoulder. So I'm gonna bring his shoulder just lined up with the side of his head. Just turn the corner there. Everybody following? So Janet, you're gonna draw later. Tina, I'm drawing along with you. Thank you, Tina. Oh, I can't wait to see. Hope you can put it in my group. So now we're doing a straight line all the way down and we're going to bring it off the page. Let me just make sure you can see because when I'm drawing. Sorry everybody, I'm going to bring it up. You missed that, didn't you? So basically, we're coming down, around the corner, lined up with his head, bring it all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to come to about here and do another line. And this is going to be his arm. So just keep it in line with the line you've already done. And I'm going to have him in rags, but you don't need to. So we're going to do a few little squiggles like so. That's the arm. And then I'm going to have his top coming about here and have it in rags. So we're doing some triangular zigzag shapes. Yeah, because I'm imagining he's in the, the woods. He's with a wolf. So I'm going to think about maybe here, I'm going to do a little tummy button. <laughs> now we're going to give him some squiggles here for this top. There. How's everybody doing? Hi, Pat. And hi, Carol. You're drawing along with me. And thank you, Francis. Oh, that's good. I'm happy that I've got people drawing along with me. And you don't have to do a boy, you know, do a girl if you want to. So, we've given this top. Now, we're going to get the moon in. So, I'm going to move the paper back down a little bit. So you can see. Now, you can go, you can draw freestyle if you want to. Now, I'm just going to move it so that we can see the whole picture so you can see what I'm doing. Right, I've got a tube of tape here, and that's the perfect circle. But if you've got something round that you want to draw around, just put it so that it's coming off the page a little bit, like so, yeah? And then just use that as your guide and draw around there. So there, we've got a moon, and it's coming off the page. Everybody following along okay? Hi, Tracy. Are you drawing with me? That's brilliant. Can't wait to see what you do. I, lo I love seeing everything you put in the group. You you're all really good at drawing and you don't think you are, but you really are. So there, now we're gonna do our wolf, okay? So, as a bit of a guideline, I'm gonna imagine that my wolf's body is coming off here because he's gonna be standing a little bit behind the boy. So we're gonna put a line here round about there and then I'm going to just 
take a stab in the, in, the, in the wind and imagine where his eye is going to be. And we're going to have a closed eye. Okay? So, I'm wondering how I can do it easier for you. I think maybe around about here, we're going to draw like, it's almost like a bracket. It's like so. Or a half banana. Yeah? And actually I've done that too high. Let me see. Where's my rubber? Thank you, Lola. Bear with. I'm going to rub that one out. This is the joy of drawing, isn't it? Right, I'm going to start again. And I'm going to imagine that he is looking up to, towards the moon in some way with his eyes shut. So like so. Yeah. And then I'm going to start drawing his, his head. So we're going to put a line here and it's starting to curl around and this is going to take you towards his nose. So his nose is aiming up towards the moon. And then we're going to turn it around here. And this here is going to be his nose. So to confirm that, I'm just going to do a little shape like so. I hope everybody's following. And then down here, we're going to bring it in and then back out. So there we've got our little mouth opening, howling up towards the moon. And here's his little bottom chin starting to come down. Okay. And now we're going to finish off his head. We're going to bring this around the corner. Is it starting to look like a wolf yet? I'm going to rub away his body because that's now not going to be in line. But anyway, maybe yours was. And this here is going to be his ear. So we'll do that. Yeah. Now, me looking at this, if I was on my own, I'd rub that out and make it a little bit longer. But I'm not going to because we don't have a lot of time. But it's just to let you see that we don't always get the exact thing that we want but we'll just go with it now i'm going to bring his body down so that it's behind the little boy so like so and it's almost curling just a little bit so yeah i want that to be a bit longer never mind so that and then we're going to have a little bit here for the inside of his ear and now we're going to bring this bit here down. And this is his front. I'll bring it all the way down. Let, again, let me see if you can see. Bring it all the way down so it's coming off the page. And that is going to be his feet. So beside that, we'll just do another little line here. That's going to be his other leg. And another one here. And then we're going to give him his tummy. So just... Figure out where you want his tummy to be. He could be a big fat wolf or a skinny wolf. Or, yeah, mine is quite, he's got quite a fat tummy, Myron. I quite like it. So there, we've given him character already. So, you know, if you're on your own and you're doing it, you know, and you come back and do it later, have a play, maybe make his nose a little bit longer. Because at the minute he looks more like a dog. So... What, where his ear is as well, we're going to bring a little line down here and this is going to be his sort of front bit, his little white bit at the front. How's everybody doing? June's there. Hi June. The Amazon man was at your door. <laughs> Hi Karen. Anybody else there? Hello mum, I can see that my mum's watching. <laughs> Right, so we're going to now, I'm going to show you how to colour in your wolf and then we'll come back and do the little boy's face, okay? Because we've done faces before. I think if we do a little bit of the wolf. 
So I'm working mostly with Faber Castell pencils, but some of them I'm using Prisma colour purely because I've run out of that colour in my Faber Castell. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit so that you can see a bit closer. Right, we're going to start colouring in our rose face. And I'm going to start off with ivory, okay? But if you don't have an ivory, you can use a cream or, or a light beige. Just play around with your colours and you'll discover what they can do. So we're going to start at the top of his head and I'm only going to say it once because I say it all the time but we are colouring in light circular motions and everybody makes a fun of me because I say it all the time so I'm trying to make a conscious effort to not say it all the time so when you see me colouring you know I'm doing it in the little circular motions so there we've got it out of the way and the reason we do it light and, and in that way is so that you can get the pigment into the paper and it stops you from um, burnishing the pencil. You don't want to burnish the pencil because once you've burnished it, you can't, you can't layer on top of it. You can't really do much with it. So we're now doing, and we always start with the lightest colours first. So working with this light cream colour, that is me putting in my base on his face. And something else that I'm going to do that I forgot to put in with our pencil is just work out where you want him to have some little whiskers. So I'm going to put a circle here, here and here. And then eventually we're going to draw some long whiskers like we do. Now the next colour I'm going to use, um, hi Susan, you're watching from South Africa, wow. And you love my art, that is so lovely to know and you've the same for Lola. I absolutely love your art and your heart. Same for Lola. Thank you so much, Suzanne. It's lovely to have somebody from South Africa. That's amazing. I've had people from America as well. I'm really, really privileged. Thank you so much for everybody who tunes in and draws along with me and those who support my artwork as well on my Dasha D page. So, did I tell you what colour I'm using? I don't think I did. I'm using a beige and I'm using a Prisma colour. On this one because I don't have this shade in my paper castells at the minute. So now from the top of the nose we're going to go round the nose and that'll create a little bit of a shadow. I'm getting some hearts. Thank you for everybody sending me hearts. That is so lovely. And then we're going to follow it all the way up the side of the head and let me know if I'm going at the right pace for you. And then up onto the top of his head and just follow it around and bring it down onto his ear and then we're going to do the same around this line that we've done for his sleeping eye and if we do that it gives a little bit of a shadow and we're going to do the same down here at the bottom of his his chest and we're going to start working it up and for those who have been drawing along with me now for a little while and coming to my workshops and things we know we start light and then it always gets darker in at these corner bits okay so as we go along you'll start to see where it's going to get darker we're also going to do it a little bit here along the top of his mouth and coming down onto his chin and just follow it down a little bit. We won't go down all the way with it. So there we've got first layer. Now I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm going to use some orange, okay? So if you have an orange, mine's cadmium orange, but whatever you've got, doesn't matter. We're going to then just put a little bit of orange in here in the corners of his eyes. And I'm doing little strokes, so from the line out, like so here. And that just emphasises that a little bit. And I'm also going to put a little bit around his ears a little bit, just in here. 
just little squiggles. Now I'm going to go for a little bit of a darker shade. I'm going to go for um, raw umber. So if you've got like a pale brown or a, be a, a darker beige, we're going to start darkening up a little bit now. So we're going to go a little bit darker here underneath his nose. And you can actually bring this in onto his nose. We're going to make a sparkle as well. Let's make a little shiny bit there. So just follow, colour in his nose with a light brown first and we'll go over that again with some black just shortly. So we want to emphasise this bit here, make it a bit darker. And then follow this along the line again. Where you've already been, we're going back over. Hi Melanie, you're just watching today or you've got a headache. Oh, I had one of those yesterday. Um, I hope you feel a lot better. I felt awful yesterday. So I w if it had been yesterday that I was doing this, I would have had to have cancelled. Uh, so take it easy today, Melanie. Just rest. A little bit of self-care. So we're going to follow it around. And then we're going to do a little bit here at his ear as well. So we're going to now go in with strokes like so. So from the outside in. And then that starts to give you the effect of the ear. Having a little bit of hair on there. Okay, and we're going to darken this up. Right, I'm going to get some black. If you have a black pencil. Oh, hi, Anne. I'm happy that you're loving the wolves. I hope it works out. It's hard when I'm doing it live, it, you know. I'm a lot more relaxed when I'm on my own doing it. And if I make a mistake, I rub it out and start again. But when I'm doing it live, I have to go with what, I've, what I get on the paper. And <laughs> it's not always how I want it to look. So we're going to darken up this line here for his eye. You can make that as dark as you like. Yeah. And then we're going to make it darker in here for his ear. So get your black in there. And we're going to start doing his nose. So start to fill in the nose. And keep that little sparkle. And that'll give you a little bit of shine. Now you can go over your blacks with blues and purples and all different shades and have a play because it's worth trying to see the nice effects you get with your pencils if you go over over the top of them. I sometimes get nice surprises. So don't be frightened to layer up your colours. And then we're going to get blacker down here as well. And then into his mouth, that's going to be dark. And we're going to follow along here. Now you can do a little a little line there as well if you like and then that sort of like looks a bit like the other side of his mouth and then follow down his chin and just bring it maybe halfway so there you're already starting to emphasize and do the same in little bits on the top of his head and maybe down here you don't have to go around all of it with a black line but just every now and again, just emphasise little bits. Right, I'm going to go back to my beige. Yeah. Hi, Alicia. I hope you're doing well. Right, we're going to start shading in a little bit more here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you how we do his, his head. And I'm going to start showing you his body. I'm not going to do all of his body because I want to have give you homework so that you've got things to do this week. And then I'm going to do a bit of his face. Yeah. And then I'll leave it free reign for you all to finish, finish it off. Have you all managed to get your outline? You've managed to get the shape of a, a half a face and a wolf or a dog. <laughs> Mine's looking more like a little dog at the minute but we won't worry. So we're going round the edges with the, the creamy colour. And we're going to leave in here quite light. I'm going to use my orange as well and I'm going to put a little bit more orange going in here under his eye and that'll start to emphasise it a little bit. A little bit here on his nose. That'll make it a little bit brighter. So, I've got Marie 
you've got the outline. That's good. And are you managing to get your colours in? Right, we're going to move on to his body now. I'm finding him a bit fat, but never mind. <laughs> I'm being self-critical. So I'm going to use lots of different shades of grey on his body. So I'm going to start with the lighter shade. And again, I'm having to use Prismacolor on some of them because I've run out on my Faber-Castell. So I've got a cool grey and a warm grey here. I'm going to start with a cool grey and I'm going to start just shading in his um, his body. Thanks, darling. So we won't start doing the hair until the next layer. So for the first layer, just do your little motions. We'll see, do the thing that I'll say I'm not going to say and just fill in all of his body with a first layer like that. I'm going to do the top half for you and you can do the bottom half later on or tomorrow whenever you've got time to finish it off. So we've done our first layer. Then I'm going to move on to a darker shade, which is going to be the warm grey. And now I'm going to start doing the little, little strokes. So darker in at the top here and then just little lines all the way down and you really need a sharp pencil for this to get your little lines so we just keep following it like so and you would take that you would continue that all the way down the body okay and then you go for a darker on top so now we're going to go darker and i've got a faber castell now i've got a cold gray and do the same and then that gives you lots of layers and it helps to build up the effect of you having hair and you want it to go in the direction of the body the way that the hair would grow and every now and again you can have a little bit flicking out so that this hair isn't all a straight line you can do sometimes I do that as well just flick a little like that that's just my style though and I hope that you're all managing to find your own styles, find what, what the right way is for you, because everybody has one. It's just finding it and having confidence in it and just going with it. So that's a little bit of the starting of the hair. Can you see that okay? Yeah? So you want to follow that all the way down the body. And then when you're down here at his feet, this... This line here is going to be darkest. You're going to have this as a black line, really. And um, same with this one. And you can do your little, this little squiggly thing that I showed you earlier on as well, going down here. Once you've, once you've done all this bit, coloured all that in, you can start doing your little squiggly lines. And then sometimes as well around his legs, I from this line come in like so, and then you get these little little lines. Can you see them? I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Oh, Angus, I'm sorry. I thought that you were feeling better, so you can't draw today. Next time. I hope you feel better. So do little stri strokes like so. One, remember you're still doing the, the, the lines of the hair down his feet as well, but you can do these little lines and then that'll help to make it look round. And last, I sometimes put little hashtags and things on them as well. Play around and see what you come up with. So we're going to move on to the little boy's face now. So I've given you some homework for, to finish off your wolf. Yeah? So we're going to come over now and we're going to do the face of the little boy. Okay, so we're going to start with his eye. I'm going to give him a pupil first. So following this line, that we've, this circle that we've already done, we're now going to follow it around and give him the pupil of his eye. And we're going to give him a sparkle. So I'm going to give him a little half moon sparkle here 
and I'm going to give him a little little one round here as well. I suppose because he's looking at the moon, it's appropriate that he's got little moons in his eyes. Okay, I'm going to give him brown eyes. Is everybody with me? Oh, Angus, I hope you feel better. Right, we've got, I'm doing brown eyes, so I'm starting with a raw umber. So whatever shade of eyes, if you're going to have blue eyes, the secret is to start with the lightest colour first. And then we're going to fill in this area with the lightest shade, following it all the way around. I'm going to keep it lighter in this area here. And it's always going to be darker up here. So we're going to just continue doing that. Let me know if you're still there. Let me know if, if you're following along. Do I have any children today? It would be nice to know. I have had so many lovely pictures from children. I think the youngest is six and the oldest is 13. So if, if there are any other children out there in those kind of age groups or older or whatever it'd be nice to know and it would be nice to know what you like drawing are you still following pat thank you anybody else still drawing now we're going to do our little lines from the outside of the circle yeah marie's still there and fiona's still there lovely oh abigail's drawn today how old's abigail Oh, it's Sally. Oh, hi, Sa it's Sally from the end of my road. And Abigail's a year younger than Lola, if it's the right one. Yeah, lovely. Oh, I can't wait to see what she does. So we're doing little lines from the outside of the circle in. And we're doing that all the way around. And then we're going to have an odd one coming from the centre out, like so. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. People with toothache. Yes, Sally, you're, you're um, Abigail's 11. I hope she's getting on all right. Can't wait to see what she does. So we're going to follow this all the way around and just make this darker. Right, we're now going to get a darker shade of brown. I'm going to use... Hi, Sally. <laughs> I'm going to use Nugget. Okay. And we're going to do a little bit more of the same. Just little lines coming out from the center. And every time you do an eye, it's different. You can get, get a different effect every time and have a play around with your colors. And don't be frightened to do purple eyes and pink eyes. And the good thing with whimsical art is, you know, you can do what you like. So this here is going to be darker. And I'm going to, with this brown, start to follow this line. And this line, eventually, oh, I'm going off, off the edge. I need to stand up because I'm, I'm at the wrong angle. This line's eventually going to be black. Okay. And we're going to use the same brown. Actually, no, I'm going to use blue this time. I'm using an ultramarine blue to go inside the pupil of his eye. I want to show you how you can get a nice shade of black when you draw over the blue. Because I usually do it brown first. So let's colour this in blue. Doesn't the time fly? It's 20 to 5 already. Can't believe it. So there, we're gonna get all that a nice shade of blue. Mm. 
And you can bring that out into the brown as well if you like. You get to see how the different effects when you layer it up. And then the black can go over the top of that now. So you're starting at the top, working your way down, making sure it's really dark at the top. This black as well can come over onto your iris and that'll be your shadow. So that makes it darker. So just follow that along and every time you go over the top you're creating another layer and you're making it more vibrant. It's quite time consuming but it's worth it. And it's about getting lost in your art for a little while and relaxing. Just follow it all the way along. How are we doing? It is strange sitting here talking away like to myself. Where's Lola gone? Lola is drawn girls. She's not drawn what we're drawn. Because she's doing a 30 day drawing challenge. So every day she's drawn a different girl with a different um, phrase, which is something that she's been seeing on Instagram, I think. So can you see that starting to build up? And then you go over it again with black. So we'll, I won't go over it anymore. That's, that's homework. Just keep layering that up and it'll get blacker and blacker and blacker. And the darker that that is, the more the eye will pop. Okay? So I'm going to now give them a little bit of an eyelid. So this still needs more layers. But I'll leave that for you to layer it up. I'm going to give them an eyelid. So just a little line here. And that will come through his hair a little bit here as well. Okay. Right, we're going to get the skin tone. Let me find my skin tone. Of course, I don't have it out. I'm thinking of the world. Right. Okay, so a light flesh colour or a peachy colour, whatever you have. And we're going to start colour in, in his face a bit. So going up over his eyelid. And usually I use my favourite Castell, but this is a Prisma one because I can't find it. <laughs> I've got a box full of pencils there and I didn't have my skin tone out. I wasn't prepared. Forgot that I was doing a face. So we're just going to colour in around his face. Thank you, darling. So follow it around his eye a little bit, not all of it, and round his cheek. So you're starting to see that building up. Let me just move it down a little bit. Can you see that skin tone starting to appear? It's so faint, it's hard to show. So the way I do it is I start here in the corner of the eye and make it a bit darker in there. So, and then that starts to give you the effect. <laughs> that gives you the effect of the eye um, where the, the little bag of the eye will start to take shape. Yeah, so if you want to, you can do a little line, but I try to just do it little, not not saying it, but yeah, just lightly all the way around there. And then we'll do under his hair. I'm interested to see if everybody's done a boy or if anybody's done a girl. So just follow the hairline. And bring it down to his eye. Okay. 
I'm getting some hearts. Thank you. Now this little area here is going to be a bit whiter. So just be aware that this bit here, you can, with the corner of your pencil as well, go down this line of the paper and that seals it in a bit as well. Top tip. <laughs> so we've got boys. Tina's doing a boy, Stella's doing a boy. So it's part, well, it's quite nice to do a boy, isn't it? So with the same skin color, we're going to start going around the side of his nose. And get all this sort of get this done. Now I'm going to be aware that I want a little bit of a shine, so I'm going to draw a little circle there. And follow it all the way down to around about there, just under his nostril. So you can put a little line there if you want under his nostril. So and if you do a little stroke, so from that line up, then you start to get the feeling of it being round. And same from the other side. Oh, it's all going to be boys. Well, that's good. I'm looking forward to seeing some boys in my group. And Heather hasn't decided yet. Well, that's the joy, isn't it, of drawing. You can do whatever you like. So can you? I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit, I think. Can you see... The little lines that I've done. So you go from the outside in, and I'm hitting the camera now with my pencil, sorry. Then that can give you the effect of it being round. And you want this little bit down here to be darker. So we're going to get a darker shade now. Bring it up a little bit around this, this bit at the side as well, so that it feels like it's cohesive, it looks like his nose is going off the page, yeah? So make sure that this little bit's coloured, yeah? And you want it to still feel round, so make sure your motions are round, yeah? Right, we're going to get a little bit of a darker shade now. We are going to find, what have I got? The skin tone. I'm going to use beige. I usually I usually use the medium flesh colour. But like I say, I'm going to bring this up because I keep hitting it. I can't find it. <laughs> so a little bit darker now. In here under the nose. And we're going to keep it at its darkest. Going around the nostril and here at the bottom and then here at the corner and the rest is going to be quite light up here yeah, and same here we have it quite dark here because it's going off the page is it starting to look like a nose this bit needs to be a bit more of a shade in i think right now we're going to go for a brownie color so i'm going to use nugget again June you don't know what it is boy or girl yet <laughs> right at the very bottom it's hard to see if you can see my hair is getting in the way it's looking a bit faded out isn't it keeps keeps getting blurry a bit right so right here at the bottom is where it's going to be at its darkest so just Continue to colour there, the darker. And then you'll see it start to feel more like a nose. And you can do like a distinct or sort of line here. His nose is a wee bit crooked, but never mind. I'm going to fill this. I'm going to get my black um, fine liner to fill in his nostril, okay? So there, that looks more like a nostril. And I'm going to do a little bit of a line, black line there. And with my black pencil, just bring that along a little bit, a little bit lighter. 
and then start to do a little bit of a shade coming up with the black as well just around the nostril yeah how we doing and so with the brown sorry I need to move it down a little bit because my back's getting sore from there so just with the brown just bring that up a little bit as well with little lines just to start to make it feel more round how are you getting on Lola? so lovely we'll show them at the end a little bit darker in here <clears throat> And same under the nose as well. So colour in under his nostril. It keeps fading out. So in here, underneath his nose is always going to be darker as well. Bring it down to not all the way down to his lip. You want a little bit of a white line going around there. And if, if you have a white pencil or a cream pencil, let me just reach for my white pencil. You can draw around here with a white pencil and then that, that helps to emphasize that a little bit on top of his lip. And I'm now using the beige again. So the second shade that you used on his nose, start to bring it down. I've gone quiet. And then with the, the brown, the nugget, Start to do the same under here and inside his nose because it's not it's never white in your nose is it it's always going to be darker in there and I'm going to I'm going to make this little bit here a little bit darker that's coming down to the center of his lip How are we doing? Right, I'm going to continue with this cheek. So we're going to have our light flesh or peachy colour or whatever skin tone you want to use and start building it up. How's everybody doing in lockdown? Is everybody doing all right? I hope you're all fine, staying healthy and well. So now where we've done this little bit from the eye, start to bring it down around here. So we're going to create a little white bit under. I've got a line there. So you're starting to see the bag appearing. It's blurry when my hand's coming in. I know, I don't know why it's doing that, I think. It's every time I put my hand in, it gets blurry. It is, isn't it? I think I need to put it up a little bit then. Does that help? You just won't see it really close up. Hopefully that helps. Let me know. It's um, it's quite tricky, isn't it? Trying to to do it on the camera. So hopefully you're getting an idea. And then just follow follow your um, shade in it almost into the nose, but not completely. it light and 
bring it all the way out and then where we've got the eye this needs to come in a little bit and a little bit darker above the lid as well because that's where the shadow is now you can do your whimsical boy nose like what I do or some people like to really emphasize this and actually create a bridge on the nose but I I tend to more just do a little line here and just sort of keep it I, I don't I'm not really I don't always do a bridge some I have done an odd time but I prefer I prefer this little line but find what you prefer and so this little bit here is a little bit darker coming in. So you can have some of that colour going over the top of that little little bridge bit that you've just done. Oh, Heather's finding it relaxing. I am as well actually now that I always get nervous at the start when I first start and then by the time I start colouring I feel relaxed again. I do think that the motion of the pencils is very relaxing. <laughs> it's nice to get lost in it for a little while. I'm, I'm happy that you're relaxed doing it Heather, it's really nice. So I think we've got quite, quite a good layer of skin there. I mean obviously you can keep going but I'm going to try and show you how to do a bit of his body as well and his lips so if you continue doing that on his face and then again on his chin we'll do a circle here on his chin. Can you see the circle? And then you're going to draw, you're going to shade around that circle and bring it up to meet his chin and it's always a little bit lighter here as well. Now, if you want to give him bright cheeks, you go over the top of that with a little bit of pink, or you can use orange. Orange is quite a nice shade, or you could just do it a bit darker with browns and things. But there, that that's quite that's quite a nice shade. Um, lips, or will I, do you want me to do his jumper? What what would you, what do you want to see most? Do you want me to do his hair? Love that you're doing a boy. Ah, uh, yeah, it's about time I did a boy, Glenda. You having your two boys. What, what do you want me to, to do now? Do you want me to do the hair or do you want me to show you how to colour in his top? I'm aware that we've been doing it for an hour now. So I don't want you to be getting bored. But I also want to give you homework. So Gemma wants to see the jumper. Okay, we'll do a bit of the jumper because we've covered hair before and um yeah oh heather wants hair glenda wants hair <laughs> right i'll do a little bit of jumper and a little bit of hair yeah so i'm going to do his jumper in an orange color so i've got the cadmium orange a light shade of orange and carl wants the lips <laughs> right we'll see how we go so I'm going to start with the lightest shade. So decide on what colour you want his jumper to be. If you want it to be blue, start with the lightest shade and then put about three or four different shades of that same colour, layer them up on the top. So I'm going to do a little bit here at the top and I'm going to do a little bit at the bottom just to show you. So just colour in this little bit of area. And maybe you have to colour in his neck as well with your skin tone. And it's always darker in under the chin as well. Make sure that you put some browns and darker shades in there. So I'm trying to do I'm trying to do it quickly to show you more, if you know what I mean. So so it's always going to be darker in here as well. So you can go over this line. For now and then you continue with this light shade and then the same I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of his rag and 
and this bit here is going to be skin tone as well. So just following it around the rag. Going to do all this little bit here at the bottom. Do you hear my voice getting sleepy? <laughs> oh dear. It's not that I'm sleepy, it's just that I'm chilled out. And then with your pencil on the edge here as well, take that up the side. Look at it. Yeah, can you see that? And then that makes it look like, you know, that it's, it's finished. It doesn't look like you've just decided to stop colouring in there. I do I do that all the way along the edges of all my pe pe my pictures. So uh, with little strokes now from from the bottom up, like what we do with the lips. Just gonna do that at the bottom of his jumper. So you would colour all of it in the little motions that I've shown you, and then at the edges you would start to do these lines. Like so. Now I'm going to show you the difference with the, a little bit of skin tone in here. So you do your, your layers of skin tone. Do it along there as well. And then you would have a shadow. So with your brown, um, I'm going to use the nugget again. You would go along this little bit here with the brown and then the same here. So it's like a little bit of a shadow. And then the same under here. And then just gently try to drag some of that shadow down a little bit. So it's not just a distinct line, you're blending it in a little bit. And then you would go over this little bit with black. So you can use your fine liner or your black pencil, whatever you prefer. And then this will make it start to look like it's, um, what's the word? I don't know the word. You know what I mean? You start to then emphasize the shadow here. Yeah, so make sure there's no white between this black line and your shadow. You want that all to be shaded in and you want it to be at its darkest at the very beginning of the line and to get lighter and lighter as you go down. Can you see that okay? Why is it gone blurry again? What card paper do you recommend for drawing on? I always recommend extra smooth card, especially with when you're using your pencils because then it'll stop all the little um, what's the textured sort of look that you get on some of the papers. So extra smooth card or if you want to do your mixed media you can use the um, hot pressed watercolour card because it's smoother. And the pencils really blend really nicely into that. So it's a nice little um, exercise is to sit with your pencils and try colouring or drawing on different types of paper and you'll see the different effects that you get. And then you get, I like the extra smooth. Some people might like textured. So it depends on what you prefer. Does that help? Hypnotic. Oh, Gemma. <laughs> That's nice. So can you see now how you can do your skin tone and then get your, your jumper? And you do the same up here. You've already gone over with your dark orange, but then do the same with your brown and do your skin tone. So you're doing the same as what you did down here, up here. So you're going to have like a fine shadow going around here. And with your 
orange and build up your colour so you get your darker. You can do this as well, this effect from working it down. So doing your little lines, like what you did at the bottom here. Do them at the top as well. And you can put your little hashtags and things on, like if you want, you know, I like putting these onto my clothes. So I'll leave it that you can then colour in, and then again, it's going to be darker here along the top. And have your little lines coming down here as well. And then it's going to be black in here where you're going to have the shadow of your where your arm's going to have a shadow so i'm going to just put a little bit of black in here just to show you then how that starts to make it look oh you're welcome alicia is it alicia 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 yeah right i'm going to do a little bit of the lips for Carol and a little bit of the hair for Glenda and then I'm going to leave you with your homework to to complete your little wolf howling at the moon right so I'm going to give him some brown hair and I'm not happy with the shape of his head I'm feeling a little bit more like his head needs to be a bit bigger and I'm going to give him a little bit of a flick coming out So, got a rubber. I'm going to rub out this line that I did just to keep me right. So, if you're doing a girl, you know, bring her hair out a little bit more and then bring it around if you want to give her a bob or bring it down. You can have it long or, you know, whatever style you could have it flowing in the wind, her hair. I'm going to stick to browns and I'm going to start with the beige colour and I'm going to pretty much just not lines yet just colour in your little circular motion see I've only said it three times this whole hour which is really good um, colour all of his hair in that way for his first layer so that's him got his first layer and then with building up your darks so I'm going to start with um, raw umber and I'm going to figure out where how his flicks going so I'm going to start here and start coming down like so so starting at the top and then little lines in the direction that his hair is going so if his hair was coming down as a fringe straight down you would bring the hair straight down but because his hair has got a flick I'm bringing it round to meet with that flick because that is the direction that his hair is growing in. You always want your strokes to go in the direction that your hair is growing. So then here you want it just to come round a little bit to give the effect of his head being round. So it's kind of going from there to a flick. Yeah? So you're going to have little bits coming down this way. And then the rest coming over in a flick. And I do it from the end up as well. So this is his little flicky bit. So at the end and up. And just catching his flick. Everybody following? So coming down here. So it's starting to get darker now. So you want you to have a really sharp pencil when you're doing hair because you want each line to look like a thin strand of hair and you want lots and lots of layers of it. 
and you want to find an area where there's a shine so I'm going to leave this little bit quite light and this bit here dark So this is going to be like the shine. This is the moon coming in and it's leaving a shine on his hair. And again, with your pencil, like what we did on his jumper, do this line here. And then that makes it look a little more like his head hasn't just stopped. It keeps it. You want to have no white here. You want to make sure that you're getting all this bit coloured. So that it, it just looks like he's in a photograph. It's not just a hat. You want it to look like there's more to be seen over this edge. Can you see that? Do you see how that makes it look a bit more finished when this line's here? So I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in here because of the moon. So um, um, it's not yellow, it's cream. And then you're going to put a little bit of cream in here. And then that'll help emphasise the moonshine. So remember you've still got your moon and all to colour. I'm going to leave, you know how to colour a moon. Lola's left me. Lola's got bored. Is everybody else bored? <laughs> so a little bit of yellow here and then you start to see that shine start to appear. Right, now you wanna go darker. So your next shade of brown or whatever color of hair you're doing. Um, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use, if I can find one. I've got lots of nuggets. Sorry, I wanna find walnut brown or something. I've got walnut brown, okay. But Glenda, you're still there. And Gail's never bored and Marie's never bored. Oh, that's lovely to know. Thank you. So we want it dark, at its darkest up here at the top. So you can do a little bit of a, a line here. And then have your hair still in little thin lines. Have it, your pencil as sharp as you can have it. And then start bringing them down. And then the, the more layers that you put in, the more you'll start to see this shine build up. So just bring these around into his flick. And I turn the pencil around to get a little sharp. If you see me flicking it around, it's because I'm trying to get the sharpest edge. And I just, after I've done a couple of strokes, I spin it around again to get it sharp. In case you wonder what I'm doing. It saves me from having it sharpening lots of times. So this bit here needs to come in darker. So remember when you're colouring in his face as well, it needs to be quite dark and under here so that you can see there's a shadow going onto his eye, his eyelid. I'll leave that as homework. Are you enjoying having homework to do? Please let me know. I don't want to sound like a bossy old school teacher. <laughs> So you can start, if you, every now and again, just do one little faint line coming through his shine as well. And it starts to look more like a shine. No, not bored. Laura may have had to go and have tea or the loo, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I'll show you what Lola's been drawn, shall I? She hasn't been drawn what we are drawn. She's drawn this. 
she's doing her 30 day challenge so she's done that one she's done about six of them but this is the one she's done yesterday and she started doing this one today so i'm interested to see what she does with this one she's good she's clever so there just continue with your lines coming down do you see that starting to build up yeah so you also want to make sure that this line here is at its darkest and you're going to have a little bit of a shadow so use a lighter brown there and use your black as well you can put your black in here to build up the idea that it's um help to give you your shadows yeah, I mean, that, that looks dark just now because the rest of the hair needs to be done. But it's just so that you know when you're doing it. If you continue with that and then it'll, it'll always be, well, for me, not for you. It doesn't have to always be, you know, just that's just the way I do it. I always do it really dark up here, black. So the top bit is at its darkest and coming down lightest here where you want your shine to be. Quite dark here at the side. And dark in here at the bottom give yourself a little shadow let me just put in a little bit of a shadow so just faintly with a pale brown just start to drag out a little bit of shadow can you see that starting to build up so it's going to be darker in there Yeah, and it's going, to, it's going to be dark in here on his eyelid as well, and in here. But it's quite nice. Just have a little play when, when, when you're sitting with your pencils. Just don't be scared to try different things, because that's how you learn, that's how you grow. And sometimes it won't work. You might think, oh, I've just spoiled it. But you've learned something and you've discovered what what you how you want your art to look what your pencils can do it's all trial and error so i would do a little bit of black with your black pencil in here and you want you want this here to be really black as well we haven't done that bit and then i want to do some the lips for carl so make sure you get in here really black So it keeps fading out when I put my pencil in. I'm sorry about that. Let's try to focus, isn't it? So yeah, make sure in here is really, really black. And you can go over that with your pen if you want. And again, you still got this a little bit more black in here on his pupil, yeah? Well, I'm going to leave that for your homework. And his head, actually, now that I'm looking, probably needs to be a bit bigger. Probably I'll do a little bit onto the side there. So I'm going to do a little bit of the lips and then I'm going to leave you because then I've been with you for an hour and a half. And I'm sure you're getting fed up. So with your light peach, a little base colour in the lips. I'm going to leave this video on for a week and then I'm going to start moving them off. Um, I'm going to start moving them onto my website. So that gives you a whole week to work on it and then you get a new one. So I hope that's okay. Sorry, then I start going onto his nose, don't I? I start seeing bits where I think, <laughs> well, that could do with that. Um, right, for his lips, because it's a boy, I'm not going to give him pink lips. Got the beige. And this needs to be really sharp, and I haven't sharpened it, but I'm going to just show you quickly. So, with little strokes like so. So, whatever way the lips are going, you're going to start with it straight down here in the centre. And then coming out around like so. And then the same at the bottom. You're going to have them curling around like that. 
and then same at this line you're going to have them coming up and then same coming down and then that starts to give the illusion of the lips being round and then a little bit darker at the bottom a little bit every now and again you want to have some little white shiny bits he's got really fat lips this boy hasn't he he's got really luscious lips <laughs> he should have been a girl shouldn't he and then if you want to find a darker shade what other shade have i got i've got cinnamon cinnamon can I just sharpen this? Just bear with me a little minute. I'll hate it when I blunt. So then again, with the darker shade, doing a bit more of what you've just done. And in the center is always going to be darkest. And then again, coming down. And you just keep building them up like so. He has got really big fat lips. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> and then just a little bit darker at the bottom. Just start to drag your colour up. And the same like what we did before on the side of his lips. Yeah. And then just drag in a little bit of the colour. So it's always going to be really dark in here to where the lips meet. And then it's also going to be quite dark. You need to have a black in the centre. So in here, just emphasise that with a little bit of black. And then decide on what kind of mouth he's going to have. If he's going to have a little upward smile or... And I'm just going to darken up a little bit up here. So it's always going to have that little bit lighter in the middle. That gives the illusion of it being plump and round. You can also go in with your gel pens and emphasise these little white bits, which is quite nice. If you've got a white gel pen. So there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So, I'm going to leave it there. I think I've shown you quite a lot and I've given you quite a lot of homework. Has your boy got huge lips as well, Marie? <laughs> I'm going to turn it around. Oh. And see how you're getting on. <laughs> we've survived another one. So that's, um, I think we've done five. Five or six. <laughs> So it looks like a girl to me. He's a very pretty boy. <laughs> I think he's going to end up being a girl. His lips are too too luscious for a boy, aren't they? Like, <laughs> but anyway, it's giving you an idea. You know, when you're doing your drawing, don't get worried about your finished lines. You can always go back and change it. And every time you draw a picture, and if you think, oh, the lips are fat, the next time you draw them thinner. If you think the eyes are too slanty or too round, you draw them different the next time. So it's all a process and it's all a learning thing. So I'm hoping that I've helped you all and I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures in the group. It's um, colouring and shading and stamping whimsical girls with a dash of D. So thank you, Sally. Thank you, Tina. I hope I've helped you all. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And we'll do the same again next Friday. I have to think of what we're going to do. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. Um, I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. That's nice. And um, I hope you have a really relaxing evening. And um, I shall see you next Friday. But in the meantime, look after yourselves. Stay safe. And um, be kind to yourselves. Okay. Send in love. Bye.